Welcome to ETC This Morning. My name is Michael Hegig. Today is 11-8-2019. Today we'll be covering cattle, McDonald's, gold toilets, Dutch smugglers, and bad boy. We'll also have Tony with the survey report and Jody with the weather. From NPR News, not one drop of blood, cattle mysteriously mutilated in Oregon. In the early morning light, dust from hooves created fog at Sylvie's Valley Ranch in remote eastern Oregon. Cowboys whistle and talk low in their eager herding dogs. They're moving the cattle from one vast sage studded range to another. Five young purebred bulls mysteriously show up dead on the ranch this past summer, drained of blood and with body parts precisely removed. Aliens. The ranch's vice president, Colby Marshall, drives his truck down a U.S. Forest Service road. Then we'll get out and we'll take a little walk to where one of the bulls was found and the carcass are still there. Marshall says. Coming upon one of the dead bulls is an eerie scene. The forest is hot and still, apart from the ravens repeating cow. The bulls look like a giant deflated plush toy. It smells. Weirdly, there are no signs of buzzards, coyotes, or other scavengers. But he's bloodless. His tongue and genitals have both been surgically cut out. Marshall says these livestock were just reaching the top value of breeding bulls. The animals were worth around six grand each. That's a lot of beef. And since these were breeding bulls, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of future calves were lost too. Finding these young heifers in this remote country can sometimes take the ranch's experienced cowboys days. Ranch staff members are required to ride in pairs and are encouraged to carry arms. It's rugged, Marshall says. I mean, it's the frontier. If some person or persons has the ability to take a 2,000 pound range bull, you know, it's not inconceivable that they would have a lot of problems dealing with a 180 pound cowboy. Theories abound. Harney County Sheriff Deputy Dan Jenkins! Sorry, just had to do it. Dan Jenkins has been working the cattle cases and has gotten to dozens of calls from all over offering tips and suggestions. A lot of people lean towards the aliens, Jenkins says. One caller has told us to look for basically a depression under the carcass. Because he said that the alien ships will kind of beam the cow up and do whatever they're going to do with it. Then they just drop them from a great height. Jenkins says the cases have been tough, with little evidence and no credible leads. On his whiteboard, he has a running list scrawled in green marker with top theories. What's clear? It isn't bears, wolves, cougars, or poisonous plants. Nor were the animals shot. The FBI won't confirm or deny that it's looking into multiple slaughters. Two years ago, and 200 miles south near New Princeton, Oregon, one of Andy Davies' cows was found cut up and bloodless. She and her husband drove concentric circles around the corpse, but they never found any tracks. And this is the country. Everything you do leaves tracks, Davy says. Back in the 1980s, one of Terry Anderson's mother cows was mysteriously killed overnight. Standing at his ranch near Pendleton, Oregon, Anderson points to the exact spot where he found her on top of a mountain. He remembers her cow lying dead, her udder removed with something razor sharp. And not one drop of blood anywhere, Anderson says. He's never gotten over it. It's just left a really strange feeling with me since that day. You can't explain it, Anderson says. And you know, no one else has to be able to explain it. The Harvey County Sheriff's Office continues to field calls on the killings, and Sylvie's Valley Ranch has put up a $25,000 reward for information that could solve the case. Still sounds like aliens. And now over to Tony for the surf report. Hi, bro. This here's Tony, coming at you with the surf report. I'm down here in Perth, Australia, Chilling at Trig Point, so here we go. Current surf report for Trig Point 46 feet with a 9 mile per hour moderate offshore winds. Primary swell of 5.5 feet, bruh. Alright, you know, check it, dig it. Alright, man, secondary swell 1.1 feet. It's a little small swell, but whatever, we can dig it. Wind swell 4 feet. Not a bad swell there going on. Do a little surfing action, you know. Alright, man, air pressure, you know, air pressure. I don't know. Alright, air temperature. Huh, started to sound like Jody. Alright, man, air temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. We we'll see temperature 67 degrees Fahrenheit, bro. So, gonna be nice outside. Gonna be nice in the water. Check it. I'm gonna go surf. You guys have yourself a good day. Back to you, Mikey. Thanks, Tony. Now we move on to Man Gets Really Stoned After Drinking McDonald's Sweet Tea. A victim ordered his tea with extra lemon, which he now believes was code for marijuana, since he found three bags of weed in his cup. 
Hilton Head, South Carolina. A South Carolina man who went to McDonald's for some sweet tea says he received a little extra herbal substance on the side. The Island Packer reports Parrish Brown went to McDonald's on Hilton Head Island and asked for sweet tea with light ice and extra lemon. Brown now believes extra lemon was code for marijuana since he found three bags of weed in his cup. He says he only realized it once he was high as a kite. Tony. Brown says he'd never had marijuana, so he didn't recognize the taste. He says he paid the regular price for the items. Buford County Sheriff's Office spokesman Major Bob Broman says the investigation is ongoing. He didn't specify which McDonald's Brown had gone to. And McDonald's didn't immediately respond for requests for comment. And so let's kick it off to Jody for the weather report. Man, why am I getting stuck with the freaking weather report? I do something fun. How about we do some agricultural stuff? Maybe next time. All right, fam. All right, so snow will first appear across Montana and North Dakota later on Saturday, then into South Dakota on Sunday. By Sunday afternoon, some light snow may arrive in northern Nebraska, northwestern Iowa, and southwestern Minnesota before it could reach the Chicago area by late Sunday night. It looks like a big old snowstorm. Anyway, through Sunday night, the highest snowfall amounts will be confined to the highest elevations of the northern Rockies where over a foot of snow is possible. Now, see, we get a dusting down here in Louisiana, Bama, and they shut the state down. I don't know what they do if we got a foot of snow. So, a swath of 6 to as much as 12 inches of snow is likely through Montana and into far western South Dakota, says this Brett Edwards dude. So, all right, Michael, back to you, brother. Thanks, Jody. Now we move on to Gold Toilet features 40,815 diamonds embedded in the sea. November 5th, a Hong Kong jewelry company exhibiting at an expo in China unveiled a gold toilet with 40,815 diamonds embedded in the sea. The Coronet jewelry brand owned by Aaron Shum Jewelry Limited unveiled the gold toilet Monday at the Second China International Import Expo in Shanghai. The toilet is made mostly of gold with a seat composed of bulletproof glass with 40,815 diamonds embedded in it, a total of 334.68 carats. Coronet said the toilet is scheduled to be inspected by the Guinness World Records on Wednesday to determine whether it qualifies for a new record, most diamonds set in a toilet. It would be the 10th world record for Coronet, which previously captured titles including most diamonds set in a watch. I, I don't want to. You imagine just scraping your butt on that thing? That wouldn't be right. So our next story. Dutch smugglers used gone-off pizza cheese to hide 5 million pounds of cannabis stash. Two Dutch men caught hiding half a ton of cannabis among bags of gone-off cheese have been jailed. Henrik Rubin, 28, and Dominic Lehman, 30, had tried to smuggle the drugs worth 5 million pounds and two shipments of grated cheese and salad toppings, the National Crime Agency said. They were caught when the packages were intercepted at Dover by the Border Force in April and June 2016. Looks like a couple stoners to me. Reuben of Deeren was jailed for six years at Maidstone Crown Court after they convicted him of conspiring to import drugs. Lehman of Arnman was found guilty of the same charge and was sent to prison for five and a half years. The NCA discovered the pair were part of a wider organized crime gang and operated two units of slow industrial estate where the cannabis was to be unpacked. They plan to repackage the cheese and ship it back to the Netherlands to be used again. Really? So, for our final story, the big one. Taylor Swift holds Bat Boy Fundraiser. Los Angeles, California. Taylor Swift held a fundraiser in Beverly Hills last night to support of Bat Boy's 2020 run for President of the United States. Taylor Swift, who recently hit Bat Boy out in her Nashville mansion, has become Bat Boy's number one fan and wants nothing more to see him in the Oval Office. Additionally, while Bat Boy was hiding from the FBI in her mansion, Taylor fell in love with the Bat Boy. But Bat Boy is not in love with Taylor. Not yet, a friend of Taylor's told Weekly World News. Taylor is writing a song for him. Once he hears it, he'll be madly in love with her. Friends of Taylor tell Weekly World News that she is hoping that Bat Boy will marry her in the next year and that she will become the First Lady of the United States. Taylor has always dreamed of being POTUS, but she would be FLOTUS if she were in the arm of the Bat Boy. The fundraiser was a huge success. 
Top Celebrity and Taylor Squad were all in attendance, including Ed Sheeran, Ruby Rose, Ryan Reynolds, Blake Lively, Lord, Selena Gomez, Lena Dunham, Cassie David, and Lena Dunham. She was there twice. Taylor played a new song at the event entitled Bat Boy Forever, which went over well. Bigfoot to the rescue. Bigfoot, Bat Boy's vice presidential running mate who was also in attendance. Bigfoot was a very popular with the crowd, but he did have to lend a hand at one point. Scooter Braun and Justin Bieber tried to burst into the fundraiser at the Beverly Hills Hilton. Luckily, Bigfoot saw them coming and escorted them out, tossed them in a dumpster behind the hotel. Taylor is still extremely angry. Taylor is extremely angry that Scooter got to the rights of her original master tapes. Taylor Swift raised over $10 million for Bat Boy's presidential campaign. Bat Boy did not give a speech, primarily because he doesn't talk, but he did participate in the festivities. Bat Boy for President campaign is just getting underway. Supporters of the Bat Boy will be able to make small contributions to his campaign. He is confident that he can defeat Elizabeth Warren and Donald Trump, and he welcomes the challenge. He is a mutant, but as Bigfoot says, so are they. It's Bat Boy, what can you say? And today in What Did I Just Read? How do I take a shower without drowning my unborn baby? I'm pregnant and I haven't showered or gone near water in like five months because I'm afraid the water will go up my vagina and drown my baby. I wanted to put a plastic bag between my legs and try to take a bath, but maybe I should just elevate my legs? I don't know, but I'm afraid a little Trevor isn't going to make it. My husband hasn't touched me in months. Yes, that's from Yahoo Answers. That comes to us from our friend Ozman Cometh. This has been ETC This Morning with Weird News. Thank you for joining us and tune in next time where we'll bring you even more weirder stuff. The Surf Report, weather, maybe agriculture. Till next time, we'll see you next time.